What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Spencer taking a look at Ice Barrier in 2023. So, obviously, when the structure deck came out, it kind of flopped. It was bad, but there's been a lot of water support that's come out since this structure deck that kind of pieces the bridge a little bit. And I'll go over all of that. One of those being Abyss Shark, which is fantastic. Now, there are some cards from that structure deck that are actually like having like really good potential. I don't think it's ever going to be like a meta thread, but potential as in like being very playable and it is playable right now actually in any case let me show you what i got okay so you can normal summon mirror master or revealer i always forget this is revealer this is speaker of the ice barrier so as long as you control an ice barrier monster it's a free special summon also you get to banish it from the graveyard and it gives you a level one token which is awesome okay so abyss shark can go ahead and special summon itself and give yourself a it you can bring you i should say a 3, 4, 5 level fish monster, and that's going to be Crystal Shark, which is great because it special summons itself from the graveyard, meaning you can discard it with your revealer, and then you get to bring it back later in the turn. So, you know, you get to discard, bring out a tuner, that's Hexa, Spirit of the Ice Barrier. This lets you Foolish Burial, 3 or lower Ice Barrier monster, it becomes that level, which is great because there's a really good card that just kind of went under the radar for me when I played this like so long ago, but the deck is so different now. In any case, you can bring out Warlock of the Ice Barrier. When this card has another Ice Barrier in the field, your opponent must set spell cards. So it's anti-spell fragrance, like literally to the T. Like your opponent can't activate them to the next turn. Okay, well these are level four, so no shock there. Bahamut Shark's gonna come out for totally awesome. And then Revealer can go ahead and banish itself to bring out a token. And you can turn Bahamut Shark and the token into Marinsa's Coral and Enemy. So this requires two level, uh, two water monsters, and it lets you bring out a water monster with 1,500 or less attack. Great. So I can bring out Warlock, and then I still have Crystal Shark in the graveyard, which is great. So I can bring this out, and then I can go into Stealth Kragen. So what does this mean? Well, you do have kind of follow-up, because you can bring out uh, or send another level two. You can level manipulate for Synchro Summoning during the next turn, which is really cool, but your opponent obviously can't activate spell cards so no quick play spells either you know they can't activate them during the standby phase they have to set first which is great and your opponent's not going to be able to go over it more than likely right dark rule or more doesn't do anything now if you're putting a sphere mode or something that's you can't play around everything especially when you're playing a deck like ice barrier but like the main outs you know dark rule and more forbidden droplets that kind of thing your opponent's not going to be able to do it because they have to set those cards and then you know stealth Kragen can pop a card if they try to normal summon to get over it and then you have an Omni Negate too, which is always really good, right? In case your opponent has like evenly matched or something, like that would probably be an out if this card didn't exist, but here it is. So that's one combo. I'm going to show one more, and I'm going to go over a bunch of gameplay videos. This one's funnier. So Crystal Shark is a great discard, but Atlantean Dragoons is also a really, really good discard. When it is sent to the graveyard to activate a water monster's effect, it lets you grab a Sea Serpent. Now, a lot of the times that's Mooling Glacia, but you can't always get five waters in the graveyard on the first turn so you get to do some other really cool stuff like lapis dragon so this is a sea serpent it's a level five tuner which is very unique you don't see a lot of these but when it's added from the deck to the hand here we go i just added it from deck to hand you get to reveal this card and special summon it that's really good it's a free extender five tuner two level fours make bahamut shark going to totally awesome and now i can go ahead and foolish burial warlock this is again this is like the mainline combo so many powerful spell cards right now like most people's plays go are facilitated through spell cards this card's like unironically good and then i can go ahead and banish a you know the speaker that's what it's called yep speaker and the level one token and the lapis can make penguin brave so this is where the funny part comes in now you can go into the penguin knight that's that's the one that when it's flipped it bounces to and you could like stop your combo here but like this isn't very good like you need to do, have something better than this even even for casual like that's not good enough but what you can do is go into penguin ninja so when it's flipped up it lets you uh you know basically compulsory evacuation two spells and traps your opponent controls so how does this come in so what you're going to do is now you can get rid of bahamut shark and penguin brave bring back the warlock and then here you go your opponent's going to be forced to set spells and then you have a way to bounce them. There's a couple other cool things. This card also lets you send this face down. So thus it continues, right? Your opponent sets two spell cards. You can bounce two spell cards. But also what you can do is you can flip this up, right? You can use this effect. 
And then Hexa can go ahead and send a level 3 to the graveyard. There's a level 3 tuner that I play in the deck. And that makes 9, right? And then you can go into Trishula. Trishula can go here. And then you can bring back Warlock again. So you're going to banish an extra card. Your opponent has to set spells and traps. And thus, you know, kind of the the whole loop continues over and over again. So your opponent won't be able to use spell cards. It's, it's like a weird, never-ending lock. That's really hard to get around, actually. And then you also have an Omni Negate kind of to protect you from all that, too. Which I think is, like, pretty decent. So against, like, Runic, this is obviously pretty good. No. <laughs> A deck like that just kind of crumbles to this in a sense okay so let's go ahead and take a look at a couple replay videos i'm going to showcase one that i had no business winning and that's against sprite just like pure sprite they have all spell cards so i got pretty lucky here i suppose i'm still gonna have a good end board i'm thinking about taking out general wayne it's just a little too situational. Like, your opponent has to control a monster, and you have to control an ice barrier monster. The cool part is that it searches you spells and traps, which we can use for some cool things. But, I don't know. Generally speaking, I don't think it's going to be worth it. I think I'm going to replace this. But, you know, I uh, discarded Lanthian Dragoon, Search, bring out the Lapis. I think I just showed this, so this is like a one-for-one -one rendition of this combo. Speaker can go ahead and banish. I can now go into a Penguin Brave. And thus, my opponent's spell cards essentially will never be used. Warlock, my opponent has to set. And then here we go. Okay, so he's going to have to set five. I didn't think, you know, five's kind of extreme. You wouldn't think your opponent had that many. But this is my setup right now. Two effect failure and Omni Negate. Like, my opponent's playing behind, right? Because he couldn't basically had to skip a turn. And I can go ahead and oh, I can take those two back. I'm not going to be able to use those. He's going to go for the Ash. Uh, I guess I could totally awesome it. Or keep it and go into like a different synchro to destroy his back row. And then I can probably go into like one of the ice barrier ones to, you know, discard and destroy his cards. Bring back Warlock he has to set. Meaning that none of his cards are going to be usable. And if I do use Toad, I can just like bring back a normal summon, which is Mirror Master. And thus my plays would have continued all over again. Okay, so that was game one, game two. He put up full sprite combo. I wasn't able to get through it, obviously. And then let's go into game three. This deck is like okay going it, but you know, my opponent, with two toad smashers, I, I had no chance. So he starts off with dimensional barrier. He also has imperm and raigeki, plus blue and swap frog. This is the other piece of support that I haven't showcased yet, which is like really, really good and kind of bridges the, I don't know, I don't want to say bridge the gap. Like the deck is still technically playable without this, but this is like such a like really good engine i don't even know what i would technically replace it with so this is i this is the new card is ice jade i don't know say it ron i'll just call it let's you discard a water monster special summon a token that can't be impermed like it just happens and that's a good discard fodder for dragoons of course and the new synchro monster that it goes into is also just like so like it's so good it's a quick effect your opponent can't banish or destroy your cards like your monsters also if you it's a quick effect so if you activate it when your opponent activates a card you get to banish that card that was activated on the field and all copies of it from the graveyard which is really good too and i can go into abyss shark again like he hasn't had the opportunity to uh, even use imperm which is funny abyss shark special summons again it's not one of those effects on the field it just happens after it's summoned and then i can go into number four stealth kragan pretty good setup right Banishing, I have a pop, and then I have Ash Blossom too. He's got starter. So he's going to go ahead and imperm the Stealth Kraken. Makes sense, right? Otherwise, I'd pop his normal summon, and he'd probably be done. And then he's going to go for Swap Frog. So what I'm going to do is, like, I could also hold this for Gigantic, but I'm thinking, well, he's going to have to have starter if he's going to play the rest of this turn. He's also can't ride Gaki me because all my cards are, you know, going to be protected. And then if he has starter, I just use Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring on it. So, like, he literally can't do anything. He also activated Dimension Shifter, so this Swap Frog isn't doing anything. And then he just has to scoop, right? It's not, I'm going to be able to clean up. So I thought that was kind of cool. Like, I was able to steal a match. Like, Ice Barrier is definitely not the worst deck in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, so let's take a look at what this is. Kind of a weird hand, and I do play more of Greed because there are, like, a lot of, like, just cards you don't really want to see in your hand, and then being able to, you know... It doesn't go minus one. It kind of keeps you even in card economy. And seeing General Wayne again makes me just want to not have this card in my hand. But 
okay, I can go into Bahamut Shark, and this is like the very basic setup in case you don't have like those super extenders. Of course, you're not always going to, but this is okay, especially if my opponent's playing a very spell-based deck, and he has four in his hand. Again, there's a lot, like mo a lot, so many cards these days rely on spell cards. And I can go ahead and normal summon Wayne, and like uh, that's the decent part, like you're able to replace it and kind of continue to combo. I can go ahead and turn those into Stealth Kragen, and then just, I think, go in for lethal. <laughs> So, didn't even... All of this was just kind of to get the damage. Alright, what else? This is Starry Knight. This is actually kind of a fun duel. I've never seen anyone actually play Starry Knight, so... It's kind of neat to see this. I had to pass turn. I just, like, literally opened up hand traps. But, I, there's a lot of cards that can make this good. Any water monster, even if it's bad. If it's good, I can use it. But, I'm going to be able to disrupt him, of course. I have three hand traps. And that's the end of the turn. So, okay, off the top I get Revealer, which is great. And he's going to set a Starry Knight card. I can go ahead and trigger. I think he's going to bring out the Starry Knight. And that's going to pop a card on the field. That's Hexa, so I can't really do anything about that. I'm going to be able to get rid of whatever this is. And I still have Ash in my hand. So, really just like holding on by a prayer at this point. He's going to go for Arc Brave. That's fine. I think this is a... I think it banishes everything oh it banishes face up spells it doesn't really do much but that was clutch and that's where more more i agree looks okay because i can at least normal summon silent angler you know activate a bish shark and thus get some of my like mainline combos going or just like some threatening plays you know i also play and hopefully i show at least one combo of this this card's okay like if your opponent wants to activate a monster effect on the field they have to discard a card and if they can't then they can't activate monster effects, basically. This is a pretty good... The thing I didn't realize when I first started building Ice Bear is that they actually have decent floodgates. They weren't easy to bring out before, and they kind of are much easier to bring out now. Okay, uh, I love Nash Knight, so I was using it for a while. You, you don't have to. This could also just be Stealth Kragen, and I can pop a card. And I was just going to take this, and, and that's just kind of it. But yeah, <laughs> 2700 defense, that's how that works. And then he's going to go for Starry Knight. He's going to pop this card. And I'm going to have to get something pretty decent off the top here. It's Revealer, so that works. He, he's playing first purchase of the year. It's his new card. All He can either grab one of my cards or I can say no. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's kind of bizarre. But, yeah, having this card, Crystal Shark in the Graveyard, is so good. Like I said, anytime you have a level 4, like it just equals another form of interruption because you're playing multiple copies of this. Now, this is a quick effect, right? This card says when a monster is special summon, it, its effects are negated. But it's gonna it's a trigger effect, so it's going to trigger. I have the opportunity to pop one of his cards, and this is a pretty decent you know card for this. He's going to be able to pop, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and pop his Starry Knight. Battle phase effect. This is kind of like uh, Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. <laughs> it banishes that opponent's monster until the end phase. Like, it literally has the same effect. I don't know if it's supposed to be like part of the photon i'm not saying it's part of the archetype like in Yu-Gi-Oh, but i wonder if their lores are <laughs> connected somehow i'm not sure all right uh more of greed doesn't do anything but i can pop it boom there we go this card doesn't need material this is an incredible card and then he's going to set starry night blast and then i can go ahead and use the effect here going into the you know level 10 the banished one put it in defense position playing around mirror force <laughs> can't uh can't be too oh i guess i actually didn't even need to play around mirror force maybe the other f mirror force cards that set your monsters <laughs> something like that okay this is against salmon great and i feel like this is the mark of whether or not a deck is like decent or not if it can beat salmon great because it's like such an average deck you know i just card me uh i always say mika every time speaker because it's kind of good follow-up i don't have any ice barrier monsters so that's just kind of like is whatever if i do end up controlling one at least i'll have a token to bring out but this is good this is an eruption right the banish of it effect is an interruption this is imperm this is a pop and this is effect failure pretty okay for ice barrier he's going to activate solomon great circle he's going to use a kaiju very old-fashioned it's like an old-fashioned list he's going to imperm this i might as well use the effect to banish but at least my monsters can't be destroyed by card effects now and then the you know, the hand trap comes in handy here he's gonna set circle that's fine he's gonna set i think roar into a rage into the graveyard 
She's not going to let him grab it back because I feel like that's kind of like his main win condition right now because if he can go into access code talker, like at least they're going to be protected. He's going to have to battle over them. And I'm going to go ahead and attack twice. He only had one Bay Lynx on there. I'm going to go ahead and banish this so we can't, you know, reset it if he wanted to. And this kind of sucks. So I guess I'm in kind of a weird position. I'm thinking I'm going to activate this now. I know he has Will of the Salmon Grape, but he's going to, if he doesn't find literally a non-normal summon extender off the top of these just the top three cards his turn's over right he can go into and find the field spell that's fine but i don't think he has anything else so i'm gonna banish it and he grabs like literally like the <laughs> i think it's foxy or something or foul and it is an extender so i get punished here but considering how low i am on resources i think that was my best bet to be honest with you He's going to bring this back. He's going to go into access code talker. At least he won't be able to destroy these. He's going to waste a card. Yep, can't do anything. He's going to get over the kaiju. Not really sure why he didn't go for the, the Gamir, but okay. And then I'm going to normal summon revealer, go for the token. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to special one from the deck because I was going to try to go into the Trishula monster. But he has the ash. So I'm in a weird spot. This is obviously not good. If I don't do anything and pass, I'm dead. So I gotta get a little bit creative. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the Synchro Monster and the token, go into an enemy. And then I can bring back Silent Angler because Silent Angler is a four, or it's a four, importantly, but it has less than 1500 attack. So I can pop his access code talker for a bunch of you know, attack points, which works against him and then go for game. I thought I was done for, so I had to think about that for a long time, but I was able to find that line and I thought that was you know, pretty decent. Like I said, against Runic, when I go full combo, it's like really, really good. Oh, <laughs> the only reason I did not go for the spell combo is because like, if I, if I'm able to open this and have combo, like I get to use it. So maybe this is just proof to me that like, just go for this like anti-spell fragrance every single time. But uh, you'll see, I wanted to show the case of this. I won the duel, obviously, but yeah, if I had just used the spell one, I probably would have been in, like, a much better place. Bahamut Shark can go for totally awesome, and then I can use the token, go into a Coral. Yeah, so instead of Foolish Burial, you know, the Warlock, you could Foolish Burial Zujin because it lets you tribute itself to bring out a high-level Ice Barrier from your hand. <laughs> so I thought this was, like, the great, like, anti-monster deck, and it didn't really work out very well. Because he's only like he's literally playing runic stun it's not even like sprite runic or anything so he's gonna go ahead and bring one out he if he wants to use the effect though he's gonna have to discard an extra card so he'd have to discard two so i thought that was pretty decent he's gonna try to go for a fountain of course i'm just gonna negate that and grab it i'm pretty sure there's one that helps you bring it back from the graveyard and then helps me with follow-up too and then i also get ron which is like not very good because both of these require discards so that doesn't work out very well uh, he did have Rivalry of Warlords. That's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, attack over this. Or I thought, Quaking Mirror Force, give me a break. And then I'm going to bring out the token. And then I can actually just bring this out. So Rivalry doesn't really do anything against this deck. So he's going to banish cards. That's fine. I still have plenty. There's no, like, real combo pieces either. Like, everything's essentially a three of. And then most of the things you need are in the graveyard, like, once you get into the late turns. If it just, you know, if it gets rid of, like, the tuner, like, that kind of stinks. But... That doesn't happen all the time. Okay, I'm going to beat over this, and then he's going to keep going. So he's he's in a tough spot because all I have to do is use Gamir when he uses the field spell, and I just get to banish it. So this is like like a real interruption. He's going to be down to like zero cards, and I think I top deck an Imperm, so I'm thinking, well, I'll just go for a game soon, right? All I have to do is just let this go by so I can you know, negate the effect of Rivalry. Imperm's such a good card. I'm going to negate this, right? Just gets rid of all continuous traps. Normal summon, bring out a tuner from the deck. That's a level two, so I can go into Brionic. I've actually, I think I'm going to replace Brionic with the one that destroys. You would think bouncing is good, but so many times, like, I think like, I feel like 90% of the time, I'd rather have the one that destroys cards. And this card has that effect, right? You can, instead of discarding, you can banish it. So yeah, I had no cards in my hand, but I'm still able to use Brionic, which is really, really nice. And the reason why I do that, you would think like, what? what's the point just going to set it again but right the new ice jade synchro he's going to try to activate it and then all i have to do and i should have i have no reason why i shouldn't have just banished this it doesn't matter but there's only two cards there's nothing in graveyard so like why wouldn't i activate the effect 
In any case, he's going to try to go for rivalry during my turn. All I have to do is banish it, see you later, and then I can just go for game. So that was, that was pretty cool. All right, what else? This is against Kwaki Miru. Very intense matchup. So I'm going to go ahead and bring out the token. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I do have to discard a water monster, so I didn't really have much of a choice. It's kind of awkward when you have two discards like that, and you have to get rid of a hand trap. But I'll take it, because I'm going to have some pretty good interruption. Right, my opponent has to spe set spells and traps, which is good for me, because that's like a lot most of his hands. It's kind of what makes his, his hand playable. So that worked out in my favor. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, Foolish Burial again. It's always a good thing to do. And just pass turn. <laughs> More of greed. Can't use it right now. I'm going to banish this card, right? Continuous traps are kind of like field spells. There's not much of a difference, actually. I'm going to Ash there. And he's got one last card. It's Iron Core Immediate Disposal. But the most he's going to be able to do is get over Warlock. But the damage is kind of done at this point. Abyss Shark is like a really good top deck. Zujin is also good because it just brings itself back constantly to help you with your Synchro Summoning. I can go ahead and send the two. I can go into OG Trishula. Good looking card. <laughs> And then I can just attack for lethal. All right, what else do I got here? This is Libromancer. I think this is kind of okay. I mean, it's good to be able to, like, maybe get some follow-up. This isn't great, but again, this is Ice Barriers, I have to keep in mind. So, you know, the Banishment, that's why this card's kind of, like, necessary. You, gotta, you sort of kind of have to wait for this card to come out to make this deck, like, playable as, at the level it is right now. But it's the new Ice Jade. It's Imperm. It's Effect Failure. Which is, this is, uh, okay. Three forms of interaction is decent. So, no Geek Boy, and then no Diviner. And I still have the Banishment here. He's going to try to destroy this, and then, yeah, I'm just going to banish that. So, he doesn't have any, like, any Warrior Monsters, no Extenders. And I was going to, you know, be able to play through that. It's okay, right? That's, like, a decent end board. And we'll just show one more. This is, I guess, against Egyptian Gods. Always have those nice. Medallion's just a good card. Whenever you see these two cards in your hand, you're always pretty happy. Unfortunately, I had Frost Spirit and the card that I want to Foolish Berry with it in my hand. And then he also had Lava Golem. So, Savi doesn't look good for me, but at least Toad always triggers, like, essentially no matter what. And he's going to go for Numeron. I did have the answer for it, although he, act he doesn't even go for, like, game. You would think he would, because that is game. Or if I didn't have Imperm, it wasn't. But at least I get to keep it. This is kind of a weird misplay by him. I'm going to draw three fresh cards, which is always a good feeling. I can go into the new Synchro. I can discard Miko. And thus, I could finally get my plays going. And that's why I play Moray of Greed, of course. I'm going to go... And I actually have to, like, get over this. Like, this monster is bad for me to have. So I'm going to beat into it. That way I have the extra zone. <laughs> So I'm going to go into Coral Anemone, bring back Miko, and then now I can go into Stealth Kragen, which is pretty nice because this is only affected by XYZ monsters, and that's a pretty good target, right? 2k burn is, like, really, really good. He's going to go for Reactor Slime. I'm just going to negate this. I think, I, I think he actually tries to activate it. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and Banish Forbidden Chalice. Might as, you know, might as well. And then he's going to pass turn, and this is pretty much going to be it, right? I'm going to pop this card. You can't use the Battle Phase base effect. And then I can just attack for lethal. So that's Ice Barriers. I think it's in a decent spot. It's certainly fun to play and looking forward to that Ice Jade card to come out. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. Other than that, that's going to do it for today's video. And I'll see you guys next time.